My favourite scene in the Star Wars prequels is the Petronaki arena fight on Geonosis in Attack of the Clones. I loved it when I saw it in the cinema. I love it still. I used to also really love the subsequent Jedi vs droid battle, but you know what, let's focus on this part. Here's what you need to know. By various means, Obi-Wan and then Anakin and Padme have been captured by the Separatists. The Separatists want to break away from the Republic and are willing to bring their giant army of droids to do it. They also really want to kill Padme because she is a powerful political enemy. They are captured on Geonosis, sentenced to death in the Petronaki arena, they fight of various different beasts in their various different ways, and it contains my favourite sassy Obi-Wan moment in the whole prequel trilogy. Then we decided to come and rescue you. Good job! Hi, I'm Jill Bearup, may the fourth be with you. I hit people for fictional purposes and also make videos about fights in media. If you're into that, you should subscribe. The arena fight between the three beasts and our heroes always captivated me. First, because everybody solves their problems in their own way. Second, because Padme's way involves lockpicks, which I used to think that she had stored in her hair, which would have been a total power move for someone who's known for her elaborate hairstyles. Turns out they were just hidden in her belt all along. That was slightly disappointing when I found that out, but never mind. Third, because it contains almost no dialogue, which really helps me enjoy it and not wins. And fourth, the score is, as always, amazing, although later on perhaps not quite appropriate, but never mind that for now. So let's break this down a little bit, because that is what we do here and I want you to share my joy. The setup is this, Nexu versus Padme, Reek versus Anakin, Akle versus Obi-Wan, or if you prefer, giant cat rat, angry red rhino, and stabby crab. Right off the bat we see three different creatures and also three different approaches to escape. Padme has already begun, having popped a lockpick in her mouth at an opportune moment. She clearly has a plan. Anakin is worrying about Padme. Obi-Wan is also thinking about Padme, but mostly he's trying to concentrate and get his Padawan to concentrate as well. Qui-Gon Jinn was a student of the living force and a great proponent of keeping your thoughts in the here and now rather than dwelling on your anxieties. And that's something you can see in Obi-Wan, but also in Anakin to whom Obi-Wan tried to teach this philosophy. When he thinks that Padme is at least temporarily safe, Anakin turns to the present moment. Later in his Jedi career, Obi-Wan is going to have to be very comfortable with war and tactics and strategy. And you can see that he was already somewhat comfortable with these from the way that he tries to get Anakin to do what he wants in a tactical sense when they go after Count Dooku. But right now he's running around like he doesn't have a plan but that is the plan. Just open yourself up to the Force and then see what happens. Padme, by contrast, doesn't have any Force-related abilities, she's not a Jedi, she's just a regular person, and so she has a plan. Her approach is to get out of her handcuffs via roguelike trickery and then climb the pillar so that she's as far away from the action as possible. It's over, Nexu, she has the high ground. Sorry, couldn't resist. Obi-Wan uses his force-enhanced speed and reflexes to get the stabby grab to cut his chains and then ducks and weaves thereafter. When you watch with an eye to it, you can tell that the stabby crab thing is not actually there. But they keep these bits short enough that any subtle wrongness doesn't really have time to take root, which is useful, usually. Of the three, the Akle is the one that's most difficult to make convincing because its speed and reach means that it should just be killing you right now. But you know, Jedi. Anakin's method of escape is flashier, as you might expect. He does a force-assisted leap right onto the back of the reek and uses its strength to pull the chain off the pillar. Nice. Padme has calculated that her best chance of survival is to go high, but she's still somewhat attached to the chain. Anakin frees himself from the pillar but still has the chain attached to him. Obi-Wan is conserving his strength and frees himself from the long chain, though his hands are still cuffed together. A spectrum of possibilities, so to speak, which is pretty characteristic of this fight. Obi-Wan's live-in-the-moment stuff really works for him, Padme is the planner, Anakin is somewhere in the middle. Appropriately, since he's in the middle. Padme uses her chain, to which one arm is still attached, to smack the column-climbing Nexu. It catches her across the back, she screams, and it retreats to the bottom of the pillar. I mean, apparently that's something that they do, canonically. Strike and wait to see if your prey strikes back. Okay, I guess. Incidentally, this is probably the only arena beast which can actually be defeated by climbing the pillar and then attacking it from there. The Akle would just knock over the pillar, the reek. Ditto. Fortunate for you, Senator. You will also know that none of them are looking at or to each other at the moment, which is entirely appropriate. Solve your own problem, defeat your own monster, get out of immediate danger, and then help your friends. Also, the Jedi are Jedi and so probably don't need to look. If you want people to look at each other in fights, you can have that, and it can be an excellent storytelling moment, but here everyone is focused and that's pretty good too. More ducking and weaving and rolling from Obi-Wan, who of all of them has the most dangerous but least avoidable monster, but he's in the moment so he'll be fine. Anakin is a bit preoccupied 
terrified at the moment because he decided to enter a rodeo and now he's being dragged. Padme has formed a plan involving swinging on the chain to knock the Nexu off the pillar. Very nice. And helpfully, because she's still attached to a handcuff, she can't fall even if she lets go, which is important if you have noodle arms and are performing a swing that jerks like that. She might wrench her arm if she does it wrong, but she's not going to plummet to her death. Coincidence or good forward planning? I will leave the decision to you. Anyway, more stabby stabby action, the pillar falls over, Anakin and the Reek come to a stop, and Obi-Wan at this point manages to get himself a weapon. I just really like how he does it. Very neatly, I must say. I love that, oh you thought you were gonna stab me? Yoink! Open yourself up to whatever comes your way, Obi-Wan. Nicely done. Another set of differences here. Padme uses the chain as a weapon, Anakin uses the chain to get himself a weapon, i.e. the Reek, and Obi-Wan just takes a weapon from someone who's attacking him. All of them are fighting, but all of them are fighting very differently, and it's excellent. It's almost like somebody thought, I'm going to use this scene to show how my heroes are different but equally resourceful. Now Padme's working on actual freedom from the chain, Anakin is attempting some force taming with the Reek, Padme frees herself, Anakin's Wild West rodeo trick pays off, and now there are two. Jump! And there's a gesture of trust for you. And a kiss, which is actually appropriate under the circumstances. Hey, so I realised I love you and then we kissed and then we were about to die, but we haven't yet, so... I have spoken before about the love story and why it fails to land for me, but this is a pretty sweet moment. We call this a diplomatic solution? No, I call it aggressive negotiations. <laughs> And okay, I kind of like that one too. Obi-Wan stabs the Ackley, which does not work, but does give him time to run away, and now there are three. But oh no, Droidekas, we're all going to die, we need an intervention. Which we get, in the form of Mace Windu, and a whole lot of Jedi. And there follows another big battle. There's a reason I still love this scene. It takes three different characters and pits them against three different beasts and they all have to do the same things, but they all do them in different orders. Finding a weapon, freeing yourself from the chain, freeing your hands, dealing with the creature that's trying to kill you. It just works for me, but realistically enough, it only works briefly because they are in fact in an arena, surrounded by Geonosians, unarmed, and everyone wants them dead. But they did send a message and they're hoping it's gonna get there in time, and it did, and yay, here are your friends. It's creative, it's unique, it's fun to watch, I enjoy it. Thank you for watching, and if you like Star Wars, I have a whole playlist, which is both fight analysis and straight up media analysis. I know a lot of you asked for Mustafar, and maybe at some point, because you know, I have some opinions. But for now, have a nice, happy, positive video.